Miles Home Groups, I'm very happy to be with you all today as we continue to study our series called Lighthouse Culture. This month, we will be studying the value called We Love Our Community. Let me start with a question. Do you know how many times the word love is mentioned in the Bible? Of course, it varies from Bible translation to Bible translation, but the New King James Version, the word love is mentioned 361 times. The ESV mentions the word love 551 times. Also, there are different kinds of love in the Bible, as we know, but the point here is love is everywhere in the Bible and we are called to love. What about community? Did you know God has his own people, his own community, whom he loves? And I want to tell you, God's community is the world. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And why do we have to love? 1 John 4.11 says, Behold, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And verse 19, just to make it more clear, says, We love because he first loved us. Today we'll focus on three communities that God pays special attention to. First one is the nation of Israel. Have you ever wondered why Israel is always in the news? They are God's chosen people. We have to support Israel. We have to stand with Israel. Israel is God's chosen people, and in Jesus we are partakers of this blessing. Romans eleven seventeen says that we were grafted in among them and became partaker with them of the rich root of the olive tree. Before Israel was a nation, though, Israel was one man. Before God starts a movement, He always starts with one person. God looks upon you and me as He wants to do something credible in and through our lives. God started that with Abraham. In Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3, says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go forth, can you say that with me? Go to your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and so you shall be a blessing. It had nothing to do with Abraham, but God wanted to bless us through him. Continuing verse 3, it says, And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Abraham's obedience made a way through Abraham's lineage, and Jesus came into his lineage. The word love is first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 22. Interestingly, love is not mentioned in the Garden of Eden or in the stories of Noah. It isn't mentioned until Abraham was 100 years old and Isaac was a young man. And God is testing Abraham in that episode. So Genesis 22 two says, Then he said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, love, right there, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. That story foreshadows the greatest story ever told. On Calvary, God gave his only begotten son, his beloved son, God loved us so much that he sacrificed his much-loved son, Jesus, so that we could be also part of God's chosen people. The second community that God pays special attention to is the church. And the first time the word church is found in the Bible is in Matthew 16, 18. And it says, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And that church there from the Greek is ecclesia, called out assembly. God's calling the church to get back to our original name, called out people, not sitting the pew people. God was trying to teach the disciples that whenever you confess Jesus as the son of the living God, you become part of a network. It doesn't matter if you go into dangerous places or dangerous situations. If God's for you, who can be against you? There is no doubt that God used Peter in a major way. I believe anybody who confesses Jesus as the Lord and Savior may be used like Peter was. God wants to use you just as He used Peter. It's not about being famous. It's about fulfilling the call of God in your life. Just like with our church. From a tent to a small church 
then to a larger church on the same property, and after that to the place where we are located at right now. We are growing as a church because we understand that we are called out people. We are reaching out to more and more people and extending our reach. Amen. The third community that God pays special attention to is your community. Did you know that God loves your community? He loves Dallas, South Dallas, North Dallas, East Dallas, West Dallas. Did you know that God loves your local school, police station, police officers, and we are called to reach them and love them as well. Act 1-8 says, But you receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. My question to you now is, do you know the name of your neighbor to the right and to the left and across the street? If you can say yes, you're one step ahead. But how are they supposed to know Jesus if you don't know their name and if they don't know your name? They are Jerusalem. Reach out to them. John 13, 35 says, But by this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Sometimes we support Israel and the church, and even this candidate, that candidate, but what about your neighbor? Do you love your neighbor? Don't aim for changes on a national level if you don't do it on a local level. As a church, aiming to reach out to our community, we, the Lighthouse, support schools, we host school events, free of charge. We have our Easter egg hunt and fall fest. We have Dallas Metro that uses our facilities to reach to hundreds of kids and the Lighthouse Recreation Center, Learning Center, Live School. We have Spanish and Portuguese services besides our English service. We're doing a lot because we want to reach out to our community. And you know, there was a lady one time that she realized her neighbor was basically raising two kids by herself. So she decided to pay her a visit and invite her to church. That neighbor had a newborn baby and a four-year-old boy who had lots of health problems. The husband was very absent and uncaring for his family. So the neighbor accepted the offer and went to church. Sunday after Sunday, she was taking her neighbor and her two sons to church. The husband, seeing the transformation that happened in his family, decided to give his life to Jesus later on. Little by little, God transformed that family. They became a healthy family. Nowadays, both boys are married, so they are adults now. They have their own families, and one of them became a pastor. It all depended on a lady, one lady, who realized she could love her neighbor. If I'm here in front of you guys teaching this class today, it's because my family was loved by a neighbor and transformed through that love. I am that newborn baby from that story. When I look back on this story, I ask myself, how can I love my community better? What can I do to love them more? Love withholds nothing. Love sacrifices the best. Love costs everything. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind? Do you love your neighbor as yourself? God's calling you out so that you can love your community.